use of hysteroscopy in diagnosis and follow-up of acquired uterine-enhanced myometrial vascularity. This video describes an unusual presentation of a patient with acquired uterine-enhanced myometrial vascularity, or EMV, and includes rare video of its hysteroscopic appearance. The following is a 22-year-old G2P1011 who presented to the emergency department with heavy vaginal bleeding and a negative urine HCG, nine weeks following a first trimester termination of pregnancy. Her ultrasound demonstrated a heterogeneous 2.6 centimeter vascular mass in the endometrial canal that was initially interpreted as retained product of conception. The differential diagnosis of a vascular uterine mass includes products of conception, enhanced myometrial vascularity, previously known as arteriovenous malformation, myoma, and various tumors, a high-flow vascular lesion, particularly with a peak systolic velocity of greater than 20 centimeters per second, is strongly suggestive of uterine EMV. Unfortunately, this patient's ultrasound study did not measure peak systolic velocity. The patient continued to bleed heavily, and during her observation, her hemoglobin dropped from 8.3 to 6.9 grams per deciliter overnight. She was transfused two units of red blood cells and added on to the OR schedule for hysteroscopic evaluation and possible uterine curatage. At this point, and with the benefit of perfect hindsight, we note that her hysteroscopy under anesthesia may have been avoidable had a more conclusive, non-invasive diagnosis been made, for example, by integrating peak systolic velocity from ultrasound. Hysteroscopy revealed an approximately 2 centimeter bluish vascular mass that pulsated in sync with the patient's heartbeat. The hysteroscopic appearance of this lesion is diagnostic for EMV. The procedure was therefore terminated, and the patient transferred to our main campus with a plan to embolize the lesion. Any uterine procedure, including hysteroscopy, carries risk of inadvertent vascular injury or bleeding. The potential for significant hemorrhage is increased when a high-flow vascular system is identified in the uterine cavity. However, when there is concern for retained products of conception, hysteroscopy may be a more appropriate next step, as this can be both diagnostic and therapeutic. This risk can be minimized by only using cervical dilators to the level of the internal cervical os. The hysteroscope should only be advanced into the uterine cavity under direct visual guidance, limiting any direct trauma. Use of an infusion pump will allow the surgeon to vary the intrauterine pressure to maintain a clear field while avoiding excess fluid absorption. Lastly, blind curatage should be avoided. The major acquired risk factor for uterine-enhanced myometrial vascularity is prior uterine instrumentation or surgery, such as curatage, cesarean section, or myomectomy, and is often in the context of a pregnancy, although other risk factors include endometrial carcinoma, cervical carcinoma, gestational trophoblastic disease, and cesarean scar pregnancy. Given the fertility concerns, the diagnosis was confirmed with MRI-MRA, which identified a 2.7 centimeter mass-like process with early post-contrast enhancements in the arterial phase. T2-weighted images demonstrated tubular flow voids along the right lateral fundal myometrium, forming a 2.7 centimeter mass-like projection into the right anterolateral myometrium. Post-contrast coronal images demonstrated early enhancement in the arterial phase with asymmetric filling of the right gonadal vein, clinically consistent with the enhanced myometrial vascularity. patient was consented for angiogram and selective uterine artery embolization. Although actively bleeding patients should generally be treated with embolization, stable patients with vascular appearing lesions on ultrasound and a lower peak systolic velocity have been successfully managed conservatively. There are also case reports of hysteroscopic electrosurgical coagulation of lesions. In rare cases, surgical control of the vessels supplying the EMV or even hysterectomy is required. The patient was counseled on the risk for potentially decreased ovarian reserve, infertility, uterine synechiae, and pregnancy-related complications. 
Despite these risks, in multiple case series, the majority of patients who underwent UAE and desired future fertility achieved pregnancy and experienced uncomplicated pregnancies following uterine artery embolization. An angiogram demonstrated bilaterally enlarged tortuous uterine arteries perfusing a hypervascular EMV, again confirming the diagnosis. Using 500 to 700 micron trisacral gelatin cross-linked microspheres, each uterine artery was embolized to slow arterial flow. An angiogram following embolization demonstrated visualization of the main uterine arteries without visualization of the branches of the previously seen enhanced myometrial vascularity. The patient was discharged three days after her embolization and seen in the office two weeks later for follow-up hysteroscopy. Hysteroscopy demonstrated a two centimeter raised area of white tissue on the posterior uterus without pulsations and no intrauterine adhesions. Few loose microspheres were also visualized in the cavity. The remainder of the patient's postoperative course was uncomplicated. The patient was seen six weeks later, at which time bleeding had ceased. This time, hysteroscopy revealed only a small 0.5 centimeter calcified avascular posterior nodule with a circumferential pseudodecidual reaction. Again, no adhesions were noted. In summary, we believe that in skilled hands, hysteroscopy is a versatile tool that can safely diagnose enhanced myometrial vascularity and actively bleeding patients when the diagnosis is unclear. Uterine enhanced myometrial vascularity is a rare but cannot miss diagnosis characterized by vascular flow on ultrasound with high peak systolic velocity, arterial pulsations on hysteroscopy, and early venous filling on MRA or angiogram. Lesions should never be biopsied as this can precipitate catastrophic massive hemorrhage. Rather, symptomatic patients with significant bleeding are best managed with interventional radiology consultation 